This is a Mac Mini. And this, and this, and this, and this, and even this, are all gonna go inside there. Also this. So let's crack it open and get started. Okay, so this Mac Mini is one I picked up on Craigslist just recently. It was pretty cheap, and uh, in case you're wondering the specs on this one, this is a um, 1.66 gigahertz Intel Core Duo. It's a pretty old system. This is like a Mac Mini 1,1, 1, I think like the early 2006 model. And uh, one of the things we're gonna do to it is upgrade it to this. This is a Intel Core 2 Duo, T7600. So we go from a Core Duo to a Core 2 Duo. Then we go from 1.66 gigahertz to 2.33 gigahertz. So I don't know how big a jump that's really gonna be, but should hopefully make it a little bit better and a little bit faster. And as a preview of some of the other upgrades you saw earlier, the big one is we're gonna go from one gig of RAM to, to four gigs of RAM. But I think maybe only three or three and a half gigs technically, because I think the this is still a 32-bit system, and so I think it can't read more properly read all four gigs. Even though that's a 64-bit CPU, I think the firmware EFI in here is still only 32 gig, uh, 32 bit. So I don't know. We'll we'll find out and see how uh, how that works out. So uh, we got to flip this over. We have to use our pry tool here to pry around the case and try to pop open the little plastic clips that are all around this thing. It's not going to be fun to uh, try to try to open. Things are not really meant to be opened as you as you could imagine so not very easy to and I don't know if this tool is even long enough to reach in properly and pop the clips where I need them to be. Right? Making progress. Okay, this thing was a little stubborn and I needed more than this. I needed like a screwdriver. This is for like opening iPods. I don't know if it's quite the right tool for opening this, but I did get it open. You can see why it was so hard to open. This whole thing is just covered in friggin' little plastic clips. Like the Mac Mini is kind of cool. Like you, this is just all like crammed into this tiny little thing. Like it's, it's not a bad design. It's just that was annoying to open. I'm gonna not close this up fully until all the upgrades are done with this thing. Only once I know everything is in here and everything works, then I'll close it. <laughs> okay, so taking this thing apart is gonna be fun. There's tons of little, like, teeny connectors and little tiny things. So, first thing to open this up, we have this Wi-Fi antenna here, which we have to get off. You can see it's sort of held on with these two little plastic clips there. Not the spring, the little clips on the sides. So you, like, you squeeze those in. And then this should just come off like that. It's a little weird that the Wi-Fi antenna is on spring. See the other one on this side here. The Wi-Fi antenna right here is also on a spring. A little weird. So with the Wi-Fi antenna off, sort of put that to the side. And then now we have to try to get the CD-ROM connector off from the back of the CD-ROM drive there. That's gonna be it's gonna be fun to get to. Okay, so at this point, it wasn't that hard to take apart. There were four screws, one each one in each corner. I needed a nice long little screwdriver, like this one here, and then you can actually separate two halves like that. So interestingly, the one antenna we detached is the only Wi-Fi antenna. It's only one. The other antenna, which is there. It's not actually attached to the Wi-Fi card, it's attached to this little card here, which maybe is Bluetooth or something. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are probably separate pieces in this system. So here is the main board here. The, obviously the CPU is under the seat sink. Here's the original Wi-Fi card, and here's some RAM. This is two 512, gig stick, uh, 512 meg sticks. We can't replace the RAM until after we upgrade the CPU, 
And after we change the firmware on this to think it's a newer model of Mac Mini that can support more than one gig of RAM. So you can see it's also a little dusty in here. So I'm gonna clean the dust out. We'll uh, try to detach this motherboard from the rest of the case and then we'll get the CPU out. Well, here's our logic board. It was held on by one screw in one of the corners. Take that off and it just sort of pops right out. Interestingly, on the bottom of the case here is a little thermal pad. Cause on the back of the board is, I'm guessing that's the chipset or maybe even the GPU. I'm not sure, but this chip on the back is touching the thermal pad on the bottom of the case. And now we have to get this heatsink off so we can get to the CPU so we can change it. This part's probably gonna be the most annoying. So, this heatsink is held on by these little spring-loaded little nylon tabs. And on the back, you can kind of see them poking through. And what you need to do is you need to squeeze the little, little plastic tabs here. You need to squeeze them while prying the heatsink off. This is not going to be fun to do. So I need my pliers to do this, to squeeze them. And then maybe something like this to just sort of pry this off from the top. It's not that hard. Basically, use something to push, push this in. The spring, so you just push this down, and then you can grab it with the plier, squeeze it, and then pop it up. I'm gonna do that off camera just because it's probably annoying, it's gonna be to do. That was not fun. Got it out. Yes, you can see one of them is missing, it's fine. It just sort of flew out when I got it off, but it's right here. I can put it back. So now we can see our CPU. It seems to be a T. 2300 here. So we're just going to make sure we clean off the thermal paste off of the chip, off of the cooler, then put a new one in and put the new thermal paste on it. Placing the CPU, not that hard. This little screw here, you just simply rotate the screw. That. The old chip comes out. New chip goes in the same way. There's a little triangle on the bottom, matches the little triangle here. Also, you know, just put it in the same way the other one was in there. You just line it up with the pins. You just forward it in the socket. And we screw it and we turn the screw to lock it back in. And we go. Installed. Now it's be thermal paste and I'm not gonna fully put it back together. I'm gonna try to put it back together just enough so I can boot it up to make sure the chip actually works. Because we have to do a couple other upgrades, so I'm, wanna, I'm not gonna put it back together. So we have to keep taking it apart. Just gonna put it back together just enough so that it works. Then I'll paste time. A little teeny bit in the right middle of the die here. These CPUs don't have like an integrated heat spreader or anything, so just a little bit like that. Right in the center, should be good. Take your heat sink. Put it back on, make sure I plug in the little little cable there. It needs to be plugged back in. Make sure I do that. We should have done this before I put the thermal paste on. Popped in all four little spring loaded pins here. Heat sink is back on, it's installed. Should be fine. My little pins are back through the bottom. I put the one that's missing all far back in here. Hate this heat sink, but I mean, I guess to make it small, it's how you have to do it. It's just, actually, it's easier to get on and off. Now I'm gonna see how much I need, this I need to put together just so I can power it on and make sure it actually, you know, works. Okay, now I guess I could turn it on like this, but I probably shouldn't because the fan isn't connected and I should probably make sure this thing, you know, doesn't overheat or something, so I guess I have to put this top part back on. I won't like screw it in or anything, I'll just connect it so the fan is connected and then when you do more upgrades, I can just pop this back off. This doesn't have to come off anymore, as long as the CPU works, obviously, so this should be done. I also took the time and I threw in a new BIOS battery there. The other one was 
still okay, but might as well put another one in. So, let's reattach these two halves. This should just fit over like that. Good. Got to reconnect this little cable in the front there. Okay, this should be put back together enough to turn back on. I didn't put the Wi-Fi antenna in. This isn't screwed on, but it should be fine. I did reattach the CD-ROM drive because I don't know if this computer will get mad at me if there's no CD drive or not. Sometimes Macs won't boot without them, so this should be good enough to uh, power it up. Okay, so we're booted up here. As you notice, it's yelling at me about the time since, well, I placed the BIOS battery. I can tell that the screen's a little messed up because I'm going from a DVI to a VGA adapter and I guess the resolution settings are a little off, but that's good enough. So cool, I can see my Wi-Fi, even though I didn't actually attach the Wi-Fi antenna. I mean, I'm real close to the access point, so I'm not really surprised. So what we need to know is we need to go yeah, here. Sorry about the mouse. Um, I'm using the mouse on my anti-static mat, which is not really the best mouse surface. Okay, so 2.33 Intel Core 2 Duo can see that it was um it was upgraded I guess I never really showed you uh I never showed a video of what it was before but I told you what it was before and it did work so now it's a better CPU so if we go to more info here you can see that we have a Mac mini one comma one one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flash a new firmware to this so now it's gonna be Mac mini two comma one which should let us upgrade the RAM and might even let us install Lion or Mountain Lion, though obviously the installer will still need to be modified, but we will try that. Okay, I've slightly fixed the resolution issue, and to see here we have the Mac Mini firmware tool. I will put links to this in the description if you want to try it out yourself. So, this tool is pretty simple. You basically just uh, click this button. And I guess, um, Wait, I don't know if I know the password to this. This isn't my, uh, this isn't my Mac. I just booted it up and it just like boots the desktop. I don't, let's just enter. Okay, I hit enter and type in a password and it worked. So it says here, please shut down the machine. Wait 15 seconds, hold the power button until it starts flashing. And then we set the PRAM, which I think is command option PR. So, I guess I'm going to do that. So after following the instructions of turning it off, waiting, and then holding down the power button until the little light in the front blinks, we get our little progress bar here. So now we wait while the Mac actually uh, does the actual firmware upgrade. Like I said, this should um, allow us to use four gigs of RAM instead of just the one that's in the system, and it makes it think it's a 2007 Mac Mini instead of a 2006 Mac Mini. All right, well, it finished up doing that and it rebooted and you can kind of see it's a little, graphics kind of screwed up here. As I've read, this is actually perfectly normal. You just got to um, just gotta unplug it, plug it back in again, and it should be completely fine. Let me look at that. I unplugged it, I plugged it back in, and it's perfectly fine now. So we go to about this Mac. We still see it says Core 2 Duo, more info. Now we have a Mac Mini 2.1. Again, this should let us upgrade our our RAM. And um, while we're in there, we're also going to upgrade something else. One of the other upgrades I had is the Wi-Fi card. So, this obviously has a Wi-Fi card, but this Wi-Fi card only can connect to wireless A, B, and G. It can apparently see my wireless N networks, but I don't, know if it's, I don't know if it can actually connect to it. So what I have is a wireless card that should actually be able to connect to wireless N networks. So while we're in there, we're going to um, Throw in the new RAM and the new Wi-Fi card. We just get our wi -Fi, new Wi-Fi card. We slide it onto the slot where the other one was, and just go ahead and screw it on down.
Okay, so we got our SSD here, Team Group SSD. We're going to be placing our hard drive with it. Basically take the SSD and put it where the hard drive was. It's in there now. Our SSD is installed, so the screws back in, and then we have to uh, boot from the CD and reinstall Mac. The screws don't seem to 100% line up here, but I'm going to make do with what I have. Should be able to get at least one of these to go in, and then hopefully the rest will line up as well. Okay, so it's in, it's screwed in there now. The screws fit just fine. The reason it just didn't line up is because this hard drive seems to be a little bit like thinner, so it didn't like quite line up all the way, but it's in there. It's not going anywhere. I'm gonna basically seal it back up now, put it all back together, and then we'll boot up off of the CD and we'll reinstall it. Well, we are back. Four gigs of RAM. So it says 667 megahertz RAM. This is actually 800 megahertz RAM, but it's fine that it's running at a slower speed because this motherboard doesn't support the faster RAM. It doesn't really matter. Let's check our airport card. Now it's checking what our airport card is, and now you can see that airport card actually supports connecting to wireless N. The one before it didn't, and now this one does. Well, thank you for checking out this video about this Mac Mini. Ignore all the stuff on the desk. I need to um, clean up and put all this away. I'm just glad that the upgrade on this went so smoothly. CPU, RAM, Wi-Fi, hard drive, operating system, firmware, I guess. Everything works. So I guess I'm not really 100% certain what I'm going to do with this, but it could be a nice like bridge machine between old PowerPC Macs and modern Macs since you can obviously read Mac discs and stuff. Or, I don't know, because I can use it to manage this iPod here. It was connected via FireWire. Um, I probably will put Windows on it. Like I said, though, unfortunately with Lion now, I lose Rosetta, so I can't run PowerPC apps on it, but I get enough PowerPC Mac, so that's not really a problem. So yeah, I guess I'm not really entirely sure what to do with it, but hey, for super cheap off, Craigslist, now it's updated and it runs decently well, so I have something to, uh, to show off. So thank you guys for, uh, for watching.